checking out this special edition of the RCWR show on August 18th, 2012. Do hope everybody is having a fantastic weekend so far. Hopefully, if it's extremely hot wherever you may be right now, as a lot of areas are said to be seeing some extreme temperatures this weekend, hopefully you all are kicking back, relaxing in the shade, doing your best to stay hydrated. Hopefully, you got some plans ready to enjoy possibly some of this good weather if it's a little bit more pleasant where you reside. And hopefully, you'll be able to make plans, of course, to put a book into your weekend by checking out the 25th anniversary of WWE SummerSlam. Can you believe it, folks? It's already been 25 years now that SummerSlam has been in existence. It's amazing how 25 years can just fly by just like that. I mean, when you really think about it, it's just amazing that SummerSlam has been around that long but when you really think about it it definitely adds up there so definitely welcome all of you that's checking out this special edition live on blogtalkradio.com and at our sister website at infinity one productions.com also thank those of you that's checking it out right now live on stitcher also, if you happen to be checking it out on your smartphone, special shout out to those of you. We've been checking. We know who and how you all are accessing our shows. We definitely appreciate the love. If you would like to interact with us during the course of this afternoon's episode, feel free to do so as we're on Twitter at infinity one prod. You can also interact with us on Facebook at infinity one productions. While you're there, take the time out to like our page and befriend us. It's been catching quite a bit of buzz. So over the course of the next hour, we're definitely going to get you ready for the SummerSlam pay-per-view as I'm going to be offering my match predictions on who I feel is going to be coming out top dog victorious at the pay-per-view. But you know, folks... Before we go right into it, just to reiterate on what I said a few seconds ago, 25 years now, it has been that we have had SummerSlam. And of course, we can't tackle all of these match predictions without giving a little bit of a backstory as to how SummerSlam had came about in the first place. For those of you that might not be aware of this and have no fear, we definitely will be reminding you on the RCWR post show when we cover the fallout from the SummerSlam pay-per-view. But let's pick it back up in the 1980s where Vince McMahon was in competition with Jim Crockett who was very successful with his world-class championship wrestling as Starcade was his baby. Well, we would see in 1983 McMahon would counter with WrestleMania, and it had proved to be very successful. Now, after WrestleMania 3, folks, which was in 1987, we would see Vince McMahon then create the Survivor Series, which aired the same day as Starcade 87. Soon after becoming successful in the ratings war, we would see Vince McMahon put into another rotation of pay-per-views as he created the Royal Rumble. Now, the very first Royal Rumble aired for free on the USA Network and scored huge ratings, huge viewerships. As soon, very soon, we would see Jim Crockett retaliate with Clash of Champions that had aired the same day of WrestleMania 4. Now, between the two, WrestleMania 4 proved to be the victorious one, and soon after, we would see Jim Crockett file bankruptcy and sold the company to Ted Turner, who changed it from World Class Championship Wrestling to World Championship Wrestling, WCW, for you folks out there that not quite familiar with that long name there. Soon after, we would see Vince McMahon come up with an idea for another pay-per-view as he was looking to have an August event. And thus, 
SummerSlam was born. Now, soon after, we would see WCW also try to do monthly pay-per-views as a way of trying to bring in its own revenue as well. Over the years, SummerSlam has established itself as one of the main four significant pay-per-views of the year. As we all know, it is WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble. Now, most fans will regard SummerSlam just as significantly important as WrestleMania, if not better than WrestleMania, depending on the fan that you've talked to. Just thought we'd give you a little bit of a brief little history lesson there. Hopefully you guys appreciate that. And of course, we can't go into talking about Sunday's matches without talking about all the other historic moments that had occurred in SummerSlam history. And we could bore you with a long list of every single pay-per-view that SummerSlam has had to offer, but we're not going to do all that. I actually had sat down during the course of many years, and I had the pleasure of seeing many SummerSlams. And just off the top of my head, I'm just sharing with you my favorite moments from SummerSlam history and some of my favorite moments, and I'm not going to share all of them with you right now. I'm just going to give you a little sample, and then I'll bring up the rest when we do the RCWR post show live this Sunday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific, covering the fallout from the SummerSlam pay-per-view with fan reaction. So definitely you want to make sure that you check that out. But one of the moments that jumps out at me when I think of SummerSlam, I can't help but go as far back as 1988 when the Ultimate Warrior defeated the Intercontinental Champion, the Honky Tonk Man, for the strap. That's right, Honky Tonk Man, who still to this very day has one of the longest reigns as Intercontinental Champion as he clocked in at one year, two months, and 27 days. It is a streak that has yet to be beaten. And here we had the Ultimate Warrior. He came into this SummerSlam and he defeated Honky Talk Man. Get this, in 30 seconds. Can you believe that? All that time that Honky Talk Man put into putting that Intercontinental title on the line, somehow always figuring out a way to come out on top. And here he was. He was beaten before a massive crowd of WWE wrestling fans, defeated in just 30 seconds. Honky Talk Man, unfortunately, he was never quite the same after that, but that was a huge significant moment for me when I look back at SummerSlam history. Of course, I can't also sit up and not talk about SummerSlam without bringing up SummerSlam 1989 when Hulk Hogan and Brutus Briefcake had defeated Randy Savage and Zeus. Now, for those of you that need that quick little backstory as to what had happened with this match, well, we would see Hulk Hogan go and do the first WWE movie, No Holes Barred, which was pretty successful, and we had saw Tommy Tiny Lister, you all know him, that's the big muscle guy with the eyesight problem that's popular for being in those Friday movies, he portrayed Zeus, which was this main bad guy villain in the No Holds Barred movie, and he got defeated by Hulk Hogan's character called Rip. Now, in real life, so to speak, we would see Tommy Lister be furious at the fact that Hogan had beat him in the movie and he just felt that he could actually beat Hogan in real life. So it was a little bit of a, man, this guy's kind of lost his marbles a little bit. He can't get reality separated from non-reality. And that was pretty much the basis of this matchup right here. So, I thought this was a, a pretty 
damn good tag team match. I actually had loved watching it. Of course, I'm going to end our brief little walkthrough of SummerSlam history for now. I got to bring up what had happened at 1991, which was for me one of my favorite moments in SummerSlam history. So important to me, if you ask me what else had happened on that night, I will not lie to you. I can't remember anything else because the only thing my mind remembered on this night was Macho Man, Randy Savage, and Miss Elizabeth tying the knot. Now, they would get tied later on, but this was a really awesome moment right here because it was one of the first true weddings before all the other wrestlers started having their say with it and turning it into a usual shenanigan type of event years later. This was the first real deal right here for Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth. Now, hardcore fans like myself, we all remember how we saw Jake the Snake Roberts and The Undertaker. They came unannounced to this ceremony and we saw Jake the Snake he pulled out one of his pet snakes tried to scare Elizabeth with it meantime we saw Undertaker who attacked Randy Savage with his urn I mean it was a freaking great moment right there we're definitely going to mention more SummerSlam moments when we get ready to do the RCWR post show live this Sunday but I just thought I'd share some of those moments with you all as I had some pretty fond moments right there just thought you'd all would appreciate that you'll definitely like what all i'll have to say on the rcwr post show coming up this sunday so do check that out it's going to be really cool let's go on ahead now and let's talk about some of these matches that you are going to be seeing this sunday and of course we got to talk about that youtube pre-show that's going to be airing 30 minutes before the event now in this matchup we are going to be seeing santino morella defend his united states championship against antonio cesaro now antonio cesaro a lot of people they may not really like this guy but the man definitely is unique in his own way i feel i have been paying attention to this guy since he debuted on the SmackDown roster a couple of months back. And I must admit, I've been very impressed with what I've seen of him as a singles competitor. Now, if you ask me, does he have what it takes to be a main event player? I do not quite see enough just yet. However, I do see enough that makes me say, okay, if there was ever a time... For Santino's championship to be in jeopardy, it would definitely be this Sunday. Antonio Cesaro, he has just been looking very impressive in his singles matches. I'm really liking this guy. I must admit, I'm really liking this guy a lot. He almost popped up around the same time as Damian Sandow. You know, I think he has a little bit ways to go before he can be taken seriously as a main event contender. But in the meantime, mid-card status, he definitely is. If they continue to build him right and put him in the right storylines for this character that he's packaged as right now. Of course, Antonio Cesaro, he has the lovely Ascano, who at any time could play a critical role role for his matches if she is down at ringside so in a sense we have a two against one for this united states championship match as Ascana will be on the outside probably doing her best to distract the referee to help cesario out keeping all that in mind also keeping into consideration what has been happening with Santino Morella as of late. You know, I was originally under the impression that there was ever going to be a time that Santino would finally get stripped of the United States title. It would be from none other than David Otunga, who looked as if he was going to be getting a serious push. But 
We have not seen David Otunga within really recent months. He's hardly been popping up here and there. A few times that he has popped up, he's been jobbing the people. Really haven't seen too much of him. I thought he was definitely going to be the one to take this belt off of Santino. But it is really looking like Antonio Cesaro could definitely be the man. I strongly feel that at this point, with regards to this match, I think Antonio Cesaro is definitely going to become the new United States champion. I feel that Santino has ran his course as the U.S. champ. I think it's now time to see some new blood get in there. What could possibly happen for Santino next? Well, Santino, unfortunately, he is just going to continue to do his slapstick, happy comedy routine. He's got his little YouTube shows that he has going on. I mean, Santino will be just fine if there is ever a time to really try to push somebody right now is definitely Cesaro. Cesaro needs that momentum right now. He needs that strap because if he were to lose to Santino, that would kind of hurt his value a little bit, I feel, as he's just been really on an impressive streak. So I'm looking for Santino to drop the strap to Antonio Cesaro. Let's go on now and let's talk about the next match that we have that's going to be coming up, which is R-Truth and Kofi Kingston taking on the prime time players Titus O'Neil and Darren Young for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Now, as we all have seen within recent weeks, we saw A.W. Abraham Washington be terminated by the WWE so the primetime players they have been alone since and for those of you that are not sure what's going on with AW why he was fired if you have missed all the headlines we definitely got you caught up check out this past week's episode of the Tuesday Night Wrestling Report edition of the RCWR show and the episode before that we get you all caught up to speed on what all has been transpiring and we also get you caught up on the latest installments of WWE Raw, WWE Wrestling related news and you can check that out every single Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern right here on this website at Blog Talk Radio and at our sister website at InfinityOneProductions.com but our truth Kofi Kingston they're taking on the primetime players right here and as I said a few seconds ago Titus O'Neil and Darren Young, they are now without Abraham Washington, but they have managed to do well without him. This is a very interesting matchup, considering that these two tag teams have crossed paths many times before. And it almost got to the point that fans were starting to become a little bit irritated with seeing these four guys get it on. And each time, it's not for the belt. Now, we've seen R-Truth and Kofi, uh, Kofi pick up a handful of wins over the primetime players. We've also seen R-Truth and Kofi pick up singles wins off of O'Neal and Darren Young. So it's really been kind of going back and forth, but it's been more so on R-Truth and Kofi. So, bearing all that in mind, this one is definitely a toss-up right now. I mean, it's really unfortunate that AW is gone from WWE because he was a really good mouthpiece for them. I also thought it was kind of ironic that around the same time that AW gets released, Booker T becomes the new SmackDown general manager. And I've just been saying to myself, ever since AW was let go, man, how cool would it have been if Booker T would have been the one to be the mouthpiece for the primetime players? I mean, that just would have just been just great chemistry, I feel. I really think Booker T could have really got those guys to the exact point that they needed to be with him as their manager. Booker T, without a doubt, a great talker on the mic. Um, keeping all that in mind, looking at what's been going on with R-Truth, Kofi Kingston, who really have just been 
kind of quiet. They really haven't been putting the titles out there like that as far as defending them. I like Titus O'Neil and Darren Young right now. I I love these guys. I love watching them in the ring. They are fresh. They are new. They will just have a big bullseye on their backs if they were to become the WWE Tag Team Champions. Not to mention, not to mention, Triple H, he has become quite fond of of the tag team division and he's looking to revitalize it what better way to revitalize it than by having some new blood get those straps so i'm actually going to pick the primetime players titus o'neill and darren young to become the new wwe tag team champions now will we see r-truth and kofi kingston perhaps Invoke a rematch clause for the belts. I can actually see that happen. Would it happen at a pay-per-view? That I'm not so sure about. If anything, I could kind of see it maybe happening on an episode of Raw or maybe on an episode of SmackDown. I just kind of have this vibe that once the primetime players do take the belts off of these guys, they aren't going to quite be so fun as to give them a rematch. I think some silly stuff is going to have to happen in order for O'Neal and Young to finally put the belts up for grabs against Truth and Kingston. But I'm just looking at these four guys right now. I'm looking at these two tag teams. And I'm just really saying to myself right now that as much as I love R-Truth and I love Kofi Kingston... They really just aren't doing anything right now, quite honestly. I'm ready to see Kofi Kingston go back to having a singles run. I want to see him get that reignited fuel and desire to go back to being a singles competitor and trying to reach for that big brass in the company. Go for that world heavyweight title or go for that WWE title. I just feel that Kofi Kingston is just so underrated. He's been paying his dues. He's paid it almost longer than Shelton Benjamin. I just am really ready to see Kofi move on. And, you know, with regards to R-Truth, I just kind of felt that R-Truth had worked better as a heel. I would love to see R-Truth go back that route. Who knows? Maybe something that could kind of happen is maybe we could actually see R-Truth and Kofi Kingston somewhere down the road work a few together. Maybe something could just snap and R-Truth and he just starts attacking his partner. I mean, he's a little bit crazy to begin with as he's always talking to that invisible little Jimmy. Who knows, folks? But I'm just really looking beyond Sunday night and I just really don't see the logic in having... Kofi Kingston and R-Truth remain tag team champions. Darren Young, Titus O'Neil, they are white hot right now. They definitely deserve to be the tag champions. And quite honestly, I would be pretty shocked if they did not get those tag belts. Because a lot of people, if, if now, they do not get these tag belts. A lot of people will probably look at them not winning the belts on Sunday as a sign that they could perhaps be in the doghouse for what all had happened with AW. And I just don't think that's fair. I think that now that WWE has gotten rid of AW, they can really go back to business as usual. There's no reason to punish Titus O'Neil and Darren Young. So I'm definitely going to be going with these two guys for the victory right here. Let's move on with our next match now where we have my personal favorite, one of two favorites that I'm going to be paying attention to here, which is going to see Dolph Ziggler take on Chris Jericho. Now, we all know the backstory to this match. Dolph Ziggler, he is just fresh off of his Money in the Bank victory for the World Heavyweight title as he has a date with destiny as for up to a year he will be able to cash in that money in the bank briefcase at any time to have a shot at the world heavyweight title chris jericho on the other hand jericho 
he has just been on one major funk since he has been back this time around in world wrestling entertainment as it just seems like when it comes to great matches of significance he just cannot get the job done and if there was ever a case for that argument I have no choice but to point out to the events that had transpired on this past Friday Night Smackdown where we had saw Chris Jericho take on Alberto Del Rio. Now, Ricardo Rodriguez, as usual, will play a very critical role in Del Rio's match as he was able to help get Del Rio the assist in the victory over Jericho, but... Once again, here's another case where Chris Jericho, he just cannot win that main important match. He can't win that big one when needed the most. Here was a perfect opportunity for Chris Jericho to impress the new SmackDown GM, Booker T perhaps, and the WWE Universe, and possibly earn himself a spot to maybe face Sheamus somewhere down the road for the world heavyweight title but that would not be the case as we would see del rio defeat jericho so just keeping that recent loss in mind and then also keeping into mind how we had saw chris jericho lose in a triple threat match to dolph ziggler and to the miz as Dolph Ziggler was able to pick up the victory, it just seems like Chris Jericho, he's just been really having a bad case of luck. It seems like the only good thing that he does have going on in his life right now is actually outside of wrestling. As Fozzie is getting ready to drop a new album, Fozzie has added more tour dates. Fozzie's going to be very busy at least for the rest of this year. So there's really no ETA as far as Jericho returning to the WWE once he has tied up all loose ends as far as scheduled WWE appearances. So here is this match that is definitely of great importance to the Ilatola of Ruck and Rolla as can he finally silence the naysayers can he finally silence his critics that feel just as Dolph Ziggler that maybe his time is up can he silence them all and prove that he still has what it takes in him to win the most important matches when it counts the most or will Chris Jericho leave Staples Center with his head held down as he walks away from SummerSlam defeated and looking like a former shell of his former self from back in the early 2000s. Definitely a lot at stake right here. Now I'm looking at this match very carefully and I must say I am definitely on the fence with this one. At one hand... I can look at this match and I could say Chris Jericho, he definitely needs this win. He definitely needs to go out on top. He has just done so much for the WWE within recent months. Ever since he came back earlier this year in January, he has just done a phenomenal job of just jobbing to people when it counts the most and it's just been looking more impressive to see him job to the people that he's been jobbing to in recent weeks as he just looks like he's been really having a lot of fun doing it you actually think you come off as if Jericho is actually gonna get the victory but he ends up not getting it on the one hand I'm looking at this match and I'm saying to myself yes maybe it's finally time that Chris Jericho picks up a victory here, but then post-match, we could see Dolph Ziggler just beat the crap out of Chris Jericho and just beat him to the point that Chris Jericho, he is definitely going to be off TV for a little bit, which will somewhat kind of help explain why Jericho isn't going to be on WWE programming, just to kind of touch up a little bit on what's really happening with that whole Fozzie angle 
But then on the other hand, I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, Dolph Ziggler needs this win. He needs to be able to prove his dominance. He needs to be able to prove that he is the real deal. I mean, how cool would that look on his resume for him to sit up and say that he defeated a former first ever undisputed champion that he defeated a man who defeated the rock and stone cold steve austin in the same night i mean there would be so much bragging rights that could just come off of dolph ziggler here just from having a victory over chris jericho it would make more sense for dolph ziggler to score the victory right here and be boosting about it for weeks to come looking ever so arrogant i don't know man i'm definitely on the fence when it comes to this one i mean quite honestly you know if i were to book this if i were to book this and i'm gonna explain the reason why i'm booking this later on man this is a tough one all right here we go i'm gonna have chris jericho beat Dolph Ziggler but post-match we're gonna see Dolph Ziggler attack Chris Jericho he's gonna be very bitter about getting his ass whooped and we're gonna see Dolph Ziggler just go all out on him and like I said it's gonna be to the point where Jericho he's just definitely you know he's not gonna be showing up for Raw the very next night as they are just gonna be recapping what all had happened to him now i'm not done talking about dolph ziggler just yet keep that in mind as we move along now next up folks let's tackle our next match which sees the miz taking on Rey mysterio for the wwe intercontinental championship now the miz he recently by picking up the intercontinental championship became a triple crown winner so he is facing a still relatively fresh returning Rey Mysterio here for the Intercontinental title now you know I really can't say too much about this match I mean it's unfortunate too because we have two guys that definitely know how to put on a pretty good match but we really haven't seen too much of a storyline here between Miz and Rey Mysterio, there really isn't that much going on. I mean, the only thing we know about this match is that AJ Lee, the Raw GM, had took to Twitter to announce that uh, Miz was going to be facing Rey Mysterio since he had picked up a win over him on an episode of Raw. Basically, he won the right to face Miz for the Intercontinental title. So, I mean, that's pretty much the backstory right there that explains that but other than that we really don't have too much to work with here unfortunately so keeping all that in mind uh and keeping also in mind that Rey Mysterio is still relatively coming fresh off of his well deserved hiatus or much needed rest while he was recovering from surgery and all that other good stuff I don't know, man. I'm looking at this match right here, and as much as I love Rey Mysterio, I'm a huge Rey Mysterio fan. I love his in-ring work. I am not quite ready to see a belt be put on him. Now, it would be a smart move for WWE to do because they could easily have Rey Mysterio play that Latin audience. They could have him cater to that Latin fan base maybe perhaps get the viewership up maybe have him make more appearances on smackdown i love that idea at the same time the miz he just got done doing a new movie he's going to be in the staples center he's got all those connections to people in hollywood definitely some strong connections the miz has when it comes to hollywood I don't know. I'm on. I'm a little bit on the fence with this one. Uh, you know, usually I'm pretty on point, but this is another match right here on this particular card that just kind of has me looking at this saying it could go either way. I'm going to go with The Miz. I think The Miz really needs the momentum right now. I think the right thing needs to be done 
by WWE booking management. The Miz, he needs this win. He needs to prove that he is a different Miz. He needs to prove to himself, to the guys in the back. He needs to prove that he definitely is taking this very serious. I, and I and that's what I've been picking up within recent weeks when I've been looking at the Miz. There's just something about his eyes. He just seems more determined. He seems more focused. He seems more grown up, so to speak. I'm looking for the Miz to retain his Intercontinental title. I would be shocked, folks, if Rey Mysterio were to pick up the Intercontinental belt here. If it were to happen, like I said... It's all about that Hispanic Latin fan base that WWE is really trying to do a good job tapping into. So, you know, don't be too surprised if Rey Mysterio might pick up the belt right here. And you also got to take into consideration that we got Rosa Mendez who's having her little personal problems right now. Primo and Epico, they really haven't been making too many appearances within recent weeks on WWE programming. So don't be too surprised if Rey Mysterio just so happens to pick up the belt. But for this match, I'm looking at The Miz to remain your Intercontinental Champion. All right, let's move on with the next match now that we have on the SummerSlam card. As we see Kane take on Daniel Bryan. Now this one just brilliantly just came out of nowhere as over the course of several weeks we've seen Daniel Bryan have anger management issues. We saw him try to commit AJ but it kind of backfired a little bit as she did not tie the knot with him on what was supposed to be their wedding day. On WWE Raw 1000, we also saw Daniel Bryan try to commit our truth saying that he was crazy. That didn't quite work out the way he planned either as AJ Lee had him get evaluated. And just brilliantly, we would see Kane be revealed to be Daniel Bryan's anger management therapists or the rapists as i like to call them or as sean connery would say it as portrayed by will ferrell on saturday night live love those skits of him by the way uh we definitely got some backstory for this match right here this match i'm just really loving daniel bryan the man has just been on a freaking roller coaster within the past several months it just seems like ever since he lost to Sheamus in 17 seconds the man has just skyrocketed to the top of the freaking roster it is just insane and just seeing this guy come out each and every single week and he just works the crowd so damn well if there was any evidence of that, check out this past Friday Night Smackdown, which was definitely a solid show. I mean, he got in one of the fans' faces, and he was just chanting, no, no, no. And the fan was just going right back at him saying yes. I mean, they were just really playing off of each other so damn well. The crowd... They are just really behind Daniel Bryan right now. This guy is just white hot. It is a damn shame that he is not a champion right now. Hopefully, that will change sometime, maybe before this year is out. Definitely early next year if he can keep the momentum going. But here we have this match, folks. Kane taking on Daniel Bryan. Now, I'm looking at this match, and I can tell you quite honestly, Daniel Bryan... He needs this. He needs this win. I do not particularly care too much for Kane. Uh, a lot of people I know, they would probably look at this as a squash match. I don't see it that way. I think Daniel Bryan needs this victory. It really doesn't do Kane any good to pick up this victory. I mean, what, what good does it really do Kane? Seriously, when you really think about it. It does nothing for Kane. 
Daniel Bryan, he needs this win. He needs to be able to come on to a new episode of Raw or a new episode of SmackDown. And he needs to be able to look whoever general manager it may be, AJ Lee or Booker T. He needs to be able to look them in the eyes and say, look, I just came fresh off of a victory at SummerSlam. I deserve the right to face the champion at the next pay-per-view. That could be Daniel Bryan's claims right there. Now, if they want to try to continue this Kane program, then, yeah, you could have Kane kind of pop up and say, Daniel Bryan, you and me, we're not quite done just yet. I could kind of see a little something like that happening. But Daniel Bryan, he needs this victory. I can't stress it enough. Now, will it hurt him if he loses to Kane? Not really so much. But just the fact that Brian just has a strong fan base that just continues to grow and grow every single week. He's got a lot of momentum going right now. You don't really want to kill it. You definitely want to keep it going. Have it, have it remain intact and as strong as you can possibly have it remain until whenever it's time for him to possibly get the belt. Definitely. Daniel Bryan, he needs this win over Kane. As I said before, I can't stress it enough. It does nothing for Kane. Hopefully, WWE management, they will really pay close attention to this match. And they will say, you know what? Kane definitely does not need this. We got to give it to Bryan. Like I said, I'm all for these two guys continuing to work a program with each other. It could be two pay-per-views. Or three consecutive pay-per-views that these guys work. I'm all fine for that. But if it's going to be a best two out of three. Or three out of three or whatever. Then Daniel Bryan, he needs first strike. He needs to be able to pick up the victory here. I wouldn't be too surprised if Daniel Bryan kind of went into this match. Kind of a little bit scared or a little bit intimidated. Played a little bit of footsie race with Kane. Maybe tried to beat him with his speed try to play it a little bit dirty. Maybe he might pick up a dirty pin over Kane. I, I can kind of see Daniel Bryan kind of operating like that for a little bit early part in the match till he starts getting really comfortable to where he thinks he has Kane exactly where he wants him. Then we can see the big red monster make a comeback. But Daniel Bryan, I'm looking at him for the victory. Let's go on ahead now and let's talk about the next match that we got coming up for SummerSlam, which sees Sheamus taking on Alberto Del Rio for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Now, I know some of you people, especially those of you that were not watching SmackDown, you're probably looking at this match, you're hearing me announce this match, and you're probably saying, huh, wait a minute, thought Alberto Del Rio wasn't given this match what happened well if you didn't watch smackdown this past friday night which you definitely had to watch it would turn out sheamus would plead to general manager of smackdown booker t and having this match be a go he wanted this match booker t he told him he said look i have concern about your injury you're not at 100 percent right now Please, you know, rethink this, reconsider. Sheamus, he said, Booker, I want this match, this injury with my arm. It's nothing to me right now. I've had worse. You got to give me this match. And so, Booker T, he went on ahead. He made the match for this Sunday. So, we see the World Heavyweight Championship on the line. Now, let us tackle this match. You would think that is clear as day. The writing is on the wall for Alberto Del Rio to become the new World Heavyweight Champion, right? Uh-uh, not so fast, folks, not so fast. Sheamus has been on one hell of a streak as World Heavyweight Champion within recent months. We just saw him have a damn impressive month in July as he took on the likes of uh, Chris Jericho. We saw him uh, take on, um, oh man, there, there's other people that I can't think of right now, but I know one of the ones that really stood out in my mind was him taking on Chris Jericho. I know for a fact we definitely saw him take on Dolph Ziggler. 
Sheamus has just been on one hell of a freaking roller coaster within recent months, but especially in July, he has had some of his best, damnedest singles competition of wrestling yet. The man is just so damn good right now. I I just don't see Alberto Del Rio getting the championship right now. I mean, Sheamus, he is just really proving with that Irish spirit that he has, that he is a man's man. He's that champion champion. He is willing to fight whenever. He's not going to back down. I love that about Sheamus. Lot riding on the line right here. We already know that Alberto Del Rio, his mentality for this match going into it is going to be to focus on that left arm that was injured on last week's SmackDown. We know that he's going to be focusing in on that arm, trying to get it nice and buttered up so he can slap on that cross arm breaker. But when it's all said and done, I see Sheamus being able to retain his title. I see him, I see Alberto Del Rio just being drained. I mean, completely drained when these two guys get done beating the crap out of each other because it's going to be more than just a wrestling match. It's definitely going to be like a straight up fight. You know, Sheamus wants him some of Alberto Del Rio. After last week on SmackDown, we saw Del Rio hire some police officer impersonators to jump Sheamus. You know Sheamus is going to be looking for some retribution right here. Now, here is where it gets interesting, folks. Keep in mind of what I just said with Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio here. I got these two guys draining each other out. I have Sheamus just knocking off Alberto Del Rio's head with that devastating bro kick. Del Rio's going to be knocked out for a good minute. Sheamus will retain. But my prediction, I believe that we're going to see Dolph Ziggler, who will probably come off of a loss to Chris Jericho, come down, cash in his money in the bank briefcase, defeat Sheamus to become the new world heavyweight champion. Now, this can ultimately set Ziggler, Sheamus, and Alberto Del Rio to have a triple threat match at the next pay-per-view. Mark my words on that. Now, we already know that Alberto Del Rio, he's been huffing and puffing. He's been wanting another opportunity to have another run at the World Heavyweight title or WWE title. We know Vince McMahon, he loves Alberto Del Rio. He has been wanting to see more aggression come from the Mexican grappler. Hey, the very next pay-per-view after SummerSlam, we could very well see Alberto Del Rio pick up the strap in a triple threat match. And maybe we could see Ziggler and Del Rio work a program together and have Sheamus be out of the loop as Sheamus could have his hands full with somebody else. Who knows? Maybe a returning Wade Barrett. Who knows? But I'm looking at Ziggler to leave the Staples Center, the new world heavyweight champion. I know I'm reaching there, folks, but hey, I'm feeling a little cocky right now. Let's see if I can be on point with this. All right, moving right along now, of course, we got to tackle that triple threat match for the WWE Championship where CM Punk is going to be defending it against the Big Show and John Cena. Triple threat match for the WWE Championship. This is a no-brainer right here. Now, just off the break, let's just go on ahead and let's eliminate the Big Show because we know that he's really just being thrown in there so he can kind of look somewhat relevant, so he can kind of look like he could possibly get it. I get the whole fact that Big Show, he's somewhat being repackaged right now. We've seen Big Show repackaged before when he's been wanting to be taken seriously. This really isn't anything new. Big Show, there's just no way he's going to be walking out of Staples Center with the WWE Championship. When you really think about it, 
the ratings aren't really going to be that good for Raw if he were to be WWE Champion. Three hours at that is just not going to happen. So let's just scratch that idea off the chart right now. Sorry for those of you that are Big Show fans, but it's just not going to happen. Now, that leaves John Cena and that leaves CM Punk. Now, John Cena has not held the WWE title in over a year. Very hard to believe when you think about it. But then we have CM Punk, who has a lot at stake in this match right here. This is a tough one. This is a tough one because on the one hand, I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, has CM Punk ran his course or is this new twist in his demeanor going to be enough to take him into next year, possibly to face The Rock? I'm really looking at this match very closely and... You know, for the first time in, in a good while since we've been doing our Call That Match series, I'm definitely at a roadblock. I don't know if you guys have been telling, but with some of these matches, it could go either way. And right now, here's another case where this match could go either way. The belt could either go with CM Punk or the belt could either go with John Cena. I'm going to have to go with my heart on this one. And I love seeing... CM Punk as the WWE Champion and there's another reason why I'm going with CM Punk to retain. Recently CM Punk had somewhat let slip that there was going to be a new WWE belt coming. Now he would also go on to say that he really wasn't supposed to talk about it and that he didn't get any type of disciplinary action as a result of letting the cat out the bag, so to speak. But he also alluded to the fact that this new belt could be revealed in front of a Boston crowd. Now, as we all know, if there was ever a time to create great WWE wrestling moments, Boston crowd is definitely one of the best crowds that's out there as far as wrestling goes. So I'm keeping these little hints in mind and I'm saying to myself, well, if we're really going to go into a new era in WWE and more specifically that new era being CM Punk, then what better way to unveil that new belt than to have CM Punk still be the WWE champion? Not to mention, and I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but we got CM Punk on the front cover of the WWE 13 video games. That's not going to really give THQ enough time, at this point at least, to change the cover art. But I'm just keeping more into consideration CM Punk revealing that he had just uh, confirmed the whole new belt design. We also had heard of CM Punk getting ready to do a new um, combos commercial as they recently had revealed some new flavors. So I'm keeping all this in mind right now and I'm definitely looking at CM Punk to retain the belt right here. Now what does that mean for later down the road? Well as I said CM Punk can unveil the new belt later on. We could see CM Punk perhaps drop the belt to The Rock. And we could see John Cena perhaps take on The Rock for the strap at next year's WrestleMania. It can be the rematch of rematches, folks. But where would that leave CM Punk? Who knows? But we'll definitely tackle that as we go further down the road. But for SummerSlam night... I'm going with CM Punk. I just don't know why we would put the belt on John Cena right now. The Rock is not going to be coming back until next year. There just really serves no purpose for John Cena getting the belt right now other than politics is all I can really think of. So I just don't feel the timing isn't quite right for John Cena. You would think that it is because he did lose to The Rock and... 
He's been in these weird type of matches with Big Show. And, you know, he just hasn't been quite the same as he was in recent years. But John Cena, I mean, when you really think about it, for a guy that has not had the WWE title, he's been involved in some pretty significant matches. I mean, The Rock, WrestleMania, then he took on Brock Lesnar the next month at Extreme Rules. Um, we saw John Cena have a ambulance match with Kane just a little bit before WrestleMania. Uh, we saw John Cena uh, be involved in that Money in the Bank match. I mean, John Cena is going to continue to always be not too far behind when you think about that WWE title. But on this night, CM Punk retains. All right, folks, let's go on ahead and let's go with our main event match of the evening as it's that time. We save the best for last, Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. Now, this is Brock Lesnar's return to SummerSlam in 10 years. The last time that Brock Lesnar was in SummerSlam was back in 2002 when he beat the people's champion, The Rock, for the WWF undisputed title. I remember that night so crystal clear. I remember how many wrestling fans felt betrayed that The Rock was going to be leaving the WWE once again, but this time for a longer period of time to go do movies in Hollywood. They felt that he was a sellout. They felt that he was turning his back on the WWF universe. They booed him out of that arena, I remember. Every single move that he was doing, they were just booing this man like crazy. Every single time Brock Lesnar was hitting The Rock, they were just cheering him on. And when they saw that devastating F5 that Brock Lesnar delivered to the People's Champion, they were in euphoria as Brock Lesnar became the new Undisputed Champion. So there's your history right there. Triple H, he is, of course, no stranger to the SummerSlam pay-per-views. He has had some of his best matches at SummerSlam. We got a lot at stake right here. You know, we're looking at this match right here. And if there was ever a time to really determine what the future could hold for the former next big thing, Brock Lesnar, it's definitely going to be with this match right here folks now on paper you look at this match and you say to yourself okay brock lesnar he needs this win he definitely needs some type of momentum otherwise if he were to lose to triple h it just how would he rebound from it that would be the main important question well unfortunately folks that's exactly how it's going to be looking. It really looks as if everything that we have seen within recent weeks, it really is coming off that Triple H is going to win. I know that you all don't want to hear that. I'm really trying to be as unbiased as humanly possible. But just considering the type of man that Triple H is, considering how he had somewhat silenced CM Punk when he had took on uh, Punk uh, sometime last year as CM Punk was fresh off of his whole pipe bomb moments and all that. I'm sorry, but it's just really looking to me like Triple H is going to get the job done at SummerSlam. That's a real tough pill to swallow. Trust me, I don't like going against Brock Lesnar. I love Brock Lesnar. I've been a fan of Brock Lesnar since day freaking one. Not too many people can say that. I remember the first time I saw this guy, I said, man, this guy is big. This guy's a freaking monster. And I was saying this before he even got down to the ring and started wrestling. I just took one look at him and I said, this guy, he's got that look. He's definitely going to be a name that we're going to be remembering for years to come. Unfortunately, on this night, and trust me, it's going to be a damn good match. No doubt about it. But unfortunately, I just see Triple H... Being that power-hungry guy that he is, playing the politics, 
I just see him screwing Brock Lesnar. Literally, I just see him picking up a victory over Brock. Very unfortunate, I know. Could there possibly be a rematch? No, I don't see a rematch happening. I see pretty much Triple H bearing Brock Lesnar and then coming out, boosting about it the very next night. It's possible maybe the program could continue between these two. Maybe there could possibly be a best two out of three. Who knows? But I know for now, as much as I don't like going against Brock Lesnar, you know, Brock Lesnar, he, he needs the win. There's, there's no doubt about it. He needs to win. Otherwise, a lot of people could sit up and say that, well, since he's been back in the WWE, he's just been losing. Well, you know, how, how can we take this guy seriously? He needs the win. You know, I'm speechless just thinking about it. I mean, he needs to win right now in order for us to be excited and say, oh, wow, the next time around when we see that he's going to be at a pay-per-view and he's having a match, we need to be excited and say, oh, yeah, this guy's probably going to get his ass beat if he's facing Brock Lesnar. Yeah, but considering what all has been happening within recent weeks with Shawn Michaels getting his arm broke by Lesnar and... Lesnar, Paul Heyman, they've been insulting Triple H's family, insulting Stephanie. You know, this is all about honor right now. And Triple H, he's definitely going to be coming out on top. You can rest assured of that. Personally, what I would like to see happen after this, I honestly, I would book this as a best two out of three. I would like to see the next time around, Brock Lesnar pick up a win, and then a couple of weeks go by, they pick it back up, they have one more match, winner takes all, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that happen, at least that way, it keeps Triple H busy, it keeps him away from messing with the other talent, I mean, if they do this right, quite honestly, they could set this up to be a, a, a main event match for WrestleMania, if they do it right, but... Who knows what's going to happen. That's going to do it for the WWE SummerSlam picks. Let's go on ahead now and let's recap for those of you. Now, let's start with the top here. So, for our YouTube pre-show match, I got Antonio Cesaro becoming your new United States Champion. For the WWE Tag Team Titles, I got the Prime Time Players, Titus O'Neil and Darren Young, defeating R-Truth and Kofi Kingston to become your new WWE Tag Team Champions. In our next match, I have The Miz retaining his Intercontinental Championship. Up next is Dolph Ziggler versus Chris Jericho. In that one, I have Chris Jericho picking up the victory, but look for Dolph Ziggler to do some type of an attack on him post-match. In our next match, we have Kane taking on Daniel Bryan. As I said before, and I can't stress it enough, Daniel Bryan needs this win over Kane. Up next is the match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Now in this one, I have Sheamus retaining his championship, but I have pinned in Dolph Ziggler to come down at the conclusion of this match to cash in his briefcase to become the new World Heavyweight Champion. So Sheamus will retain but Dolph Ziggler will come out, cash in the title, defeat him to become the new World Heavyweight Champion. And in the triple threat match for the WWE Championship, I have CM Punk retaining over Big Show and John Cena. And of course, the main event match for SummerSlam, the true main event match for SummerSlam, I feel. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar for this match. I have Triple H beating Brock Lesnar and what will truly probably be an upset to a lot of fans. And in particular, Brock Lesnar MMA UFC fans. So let the moaning and groaning begin on Triple H. 
Well, that's going to do it for our match predictions, but the fun doesn't stop right here. Now, we're going to be doing a remix version of this exclusively for YouTube. If you'd like to be a part of that, here's all you have to do. It's really simple. All you got to do is just give us your match predictions in a video reply in two minutes or less, and you can upload it, send it our way to us on YouTube. As we're on the YouTube, hit us up, The RCWR Show. That's our channel on YouTube. You can also hit us up with your video pics by hitting us up on Twitter at Infinity1Prod. And you can also hit us up on Facebook at Infinity1 Productions with your video predictions. Also, something new that we are trying out, we're also on Tout. So feel free to send us your video replies on there as well. You have until 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific to turn in your video prediction picks. The best ones we will definitely incorporate into our show. And if you are on point, we will show you love and give you a shout out live on the RCWR post show covering the WWE SummerSlam pay-per-view. That's going to do it, folks. We're going to be on somewhat of a 20-plus hour break, but we're going to be coming at you live at 11 p.m., 10 o'clock Pacific for the RCWR Post Show covering the fallout of SummerSlam with fan reactions. This is going to be a pretty awesome show. If you guys are going to be checking out the pay-per-view, feel free to interact with us on Twitter as we will be interacting with WWE fans all throughout the night leading on up into the RCWR post show. That's going to do it, folks. Until we hear from you all this Sunday, I'm the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders. Till next time, you all be safe and you all be kind to one another. Take care, folks. See you all next time.